isobutyl propionic phenyl, or ibuprofen. Fen, that's better. Now, this is a pretty cool painkiller which you can buy in the shops. It's good for killing pain, but it's also good for reducing fever and reducing inflammation. You might know it by its famous names like Nurofen or Advil. This is part of a series of videos I'm making to help you understand the drugs you're taking because it turns out that quite often we don't really know what we're putting in our mouths. I'll cover why we need to take it, how it works, the side effects, the history of its development, and even the geeky pharmacology for you drug nerds out there. Do me a favor though and subscribe if you like it, share if you love it, that would be appreciated. Now, let's go. As a painkiller, it's known as a simple one, and it's part of the arsenal of drugs we have at our disposal for step one of the painkiller ladder, a bit like paracetamol. Now, a lot of people would say it's a slightly stronger painkiller than paracetamol, and it's especially good at treating musculoskeletal pain like muscle strain, headaches, periods, dental pain, and arthritis. It also helps reduce your fever, and it reduces your inflammation, hence the name of the wider family it belongs to, NSAIDs, that's non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Now it's a pretty amazing painkiller and some people chuck it in with caffeine or lysine or make it bright red and liquidy in a capsule, but the reality is that it's really cheap as just tablets and it works just as well as everything else. We've already covered the concept of pain in another video, and if you want to refresh yourself, check out that video up there. But in a nutshell, pain is an unpleasant sensory or emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Indeed, pain is a complex sequence of events which starts with being hit, leading to a release of inflammatory mediators which cause swelling and stretching, which leads to nerve signals going to the brain, leading you to go, Ow! Now, some of the best inflammatory mediators, so the middle bit of that sequence, are called prostaglandins, and they're activated by some enzymes. NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, block those enzymes, and so reduce the pain. Prostaglandins also act in the hypothalamus in your brain, which regulates your body temperature. So the more prostaglandins you have, the hypothalamus makes your body a bit hotter. So again, blocking prostaglandins, i.e. temperature, your fever can come down. Prostaglandins also cause your blood vessels to dilate and become a bit more permeable and leaky, and that's what swelling is. So NSAIDs, uh, you know what? You get the picture, you know what's going on. So look, they reduce pain, they reduce swelling, and they reduce fever. They're a pretty good drug. When you take NSAIDs like ibuprofen, a good rule of thumb is to try and take the lowest dose possible for the shortest time possible. For most people, a one-off pop or a few days is well tolerated. In the UK, the normal dose for adults is 400 milligrams three times a day, though it can be a bit higher. If you're Spanish, you probably already have a higher dose than that because Spanish are metal. Olé! The reason we don't want to keep taking ibuprofen is because the more you take, the more likely you are to have side effects. The most common one is stomach discomfort, even stomach ulcers, or in the worst case, a perforation of your stomach. That's because prostaglandins, which we spoke about earlier, you want to stop them, right? But they also help keep your stomach lining covered by protective mucus, and they keep it refreshed with nutrients. So inhibiting prostaglandins means there's less protection for your stomach, and you might run into problems. That's why, as a rule of thumb, if you take ibuprofen, have it with some food. If you're taking NSAIDs long term, your doctor might even give you a PPI, and that will help protect you from stomach acid as well. Ibuprofen can also cause other issues, all because of how widespread prostaglandins are in your body. People who have kidney problems, heart problems, or asthma should probably think twice about taking them, especially long term. As always, if you don't feel right when you're taking a drug or you're wondering whether ibuprofen is right for you, talk to your doctor. What's Nottingham famous for? Well, not just Robin Hood, where we famously learned that you need painkillers if someone cuts your heart out with a spoon. Why a spoon, cousin? Why not an axe? Because it's dull, you twit. It'll hurt more. But also, it's famous for ibuprofen. That's right, let's go to Middle England over half a decade ago to meet a guy called Dr. Stuart Adams, who worked in the research department of the Boots Pure Drug Company. You know, Boots. <gasps> now, we already had aspirin, and I'll probably cover aspirin in another video. But after World War II, there was an appetite to improve on the efficacy of aspirin, which was a pretty good painkiller, but it, but it could be better. So in particular, rheumatoid arthritis was a condition that we really weren't on top of. And aspirin plus a steroid and sometimes some gold, that wasn't really cutting the mustard. 
Now, a few companies were already operating in this field. Megaliths like Merck and Pfizer had already made some good progress, and the guys at Boots were at a bit of a disadvantage. Now, I don't want to say that this is the story of the underdog plucky Brits, but this was their lab. Yes, a little house in the suburbs of Nottingham was where the magic happened. Boots had moved there during World War II to avoid the bombs, but this was hardly ideal. Adam's lab was in the front room, but as he did get better, in fairness, they gave him the kitchen in the larder as well. The way they started testing was to blast UV light at guinea pigs, because that causes a skin reaction, a bit like extreme sunburn. If you give a guinea pig aspirin, the rash, or erythema as it's known, is reduced. So that's the benchmark. A bunch of other compounds similar to aspirin were developed and given to guinea pigs and the rash compared. Over 1,500 compounds were tested and only a few were taken forward. The biggest win was the discover of phenoxy acid, which seemed to do really well. Although one of these was ibuprofen, the one they decided to run with was one called ibuphenac. And this was taken into clinical trials and seemed to be working until it started to cause some pretty bad liver toxicity in some patients. Weirdly though, that liver toxicity does not exist in Japanese people and nobody knows why. So ibuphenac was actually used in Japan for a while even after it stopped anywhere else. Pub quiz Japan knowledge for you there. So they went back to ibuprofen, which wasn't the most potent painkiller, but did seem to have the least side effects. Clinical trials were a success, patients with rheumatoid arthritis had stronger grip strength after taking the pills, and we had a winner! The biggest success though, especially for Boots, was successfully building the case that the drug should be allowed to be an over-the-counter medication rather than a prescribed only medication, a decision that is worth millions. So there we go, pretty cool, huh? And worth noting that Adams and his team didn't actually know how aspirin worked, and on prostaglandins, literally the targets of NSAIDs, they weren't even discovered until a decade after ibuprofen was on the market. So that's medicine for you, kids. You never know what you're gonna do. Ibuprofen is a white crystalline, slightly waxy solid with a slight odor and a strong bitter taste, which can also produce a burning sensation at the back of your throat when you swallow it. That's why we tend to coat it in sugar. And if you're anything like me, then as a kid, you'll have sucked that sugar off and got a nasty surprise. When you start looking into the chemistry of ibuprofen, you soon realize that there's actually a lot of different versions of it. It has two enantiomers, which is to say the molecule has two mirror imaged isomers that are not superimposable. So they have the same molecular formula and the same connectivity of their atoms, but their three-dimensional orientation in space is a little bit different. So in other words, they're like left and right-handed gloves. You know, they're similar, but they're not identical. You also have stereoisomers and alpha and beta ibuprofen. All of these are different shapes of the same drug and they interact with your body in a, in a slightly different way. So different ones are used for slightly different things. But on a grand scale, they all work by interacting with the cyclooxygenase or COX enzymes, namely COX-1 and COX-2. Now, both these enzymes are involved in the synthesis of prostaglandins, which are hormone-like substances that play a key role in inflammation, pain, and fever. COX-1 is constitutively expressed in many tissues, including your GI tract, kidneys, platelets, and it produces prostaglandins that are important for normal physiological functions like maintaining the integrity of your gut lining and regulating the blood flow to your kidneys and promoting platelet aggregation when you cut yourself so you have a clot. COX-2, on the other hand, is induced in response to inflammatory stimuli and produces prostaglandins that mediate pain, fever, and inflammation. Ibuprofen works by inhibiting the activity of both COX-1 and COX-2. It does this by binding to the active site of the enzyme, which is the region of the enzyme that converts arachidonic acid to prostaglandins. By binding to this active site, ibuprofen blocks the conversion of arachidonic acid to prostaglandins, which then leads to a decrease in the production of them and subsequent reduction in pain, fever, and inflammation. A lot of the over-the-counter NSAIDs like ibuprofen actually interfere with COX-1 more than COX-2, hence you might get those side effects like burning through your stomach. So in recent years, COX-2 only drugs have been developed, but these are prescription only as they're potentially a lot more dangerous. So there you go, ibuprofen, the most famous of NSAID drugs, designed by Boots, sold by Boots. So you can go to Boots, where you can buy Boots own brand ibuprofen or Nurofen, which is actually a Boots ibuprofen. Both the same, except one costs 10 times as much. But hey, that's medicine. So until next time, see you later, bye.